So recently I've been able to get access to Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. Now before going ahead, this is the beta, so anything could change between this video being made right now and the game coming out. I will also note that this is the PlayStation 4 version of the game, so any bugs and glitches that I've encountered may not appear on other systems. Also, because it is beta, they've only given us limited access to the game, as you would expect. So, expect more content in the full version. Speaking of which, the game mode that they've given us is a sort of search and destroy mode. You have two teams of five. One team attacking and one team defending. The defending team has between one and three sites to defend, while the other team has a package that they need to deliver to one of these sites and has to place it. They can drop it if they want and let someone else take it. The maps that they've given us are set in three locations. One seems to be a sort of training facility for soldiers, another is a residential house in an estate, and the third seems to be sort of a White House scenario. Each map appears to have a day and night cycle. They do not go from day to night, but more a case of you play during the day or during the night. We have seen other games do this in the past, and it's something that I quite like for developers to put into a game. Now, before even getting into a match, it's best to watch a couple of the tutorial videos which give you in-game currency to be able to purchase your classes. Different classes can be used for either attacking or defending. There is no class that does both. If you do not have any classes purchased, there is a default one which you can use. The reason for the default class is so that when you join the match, you choose your class before the round starts, however, someone else can choose that class before you and then you are locked out of using that unit. So if someone uses the only class that you have purchased, you have a class to revert to. The whole point of this seems to be for them to encourage people to use a variety of classes. One disappointing thing, however, seems to be that it is not a cops versus robbers theme. The attacking team is cops, the defending team is cops. Which is kind of disappointing, as I was expecting some kind of cops versus robbers, at least I expected for the enemy team, whether they are attacking or defending, that on your side they would look like some kind of criminals, but apparently that is not the case. So you finally jump into a match, and you are an attacker, so you select your class, what next? Well, you come up to a menu where you can select where you would like to attack from. Pretty neat, eh? So it adds a bit of variety on how you're going to play the game each time, to an extent. However. When you start the game, you do not go straight in trying to blast down the place like you're some kind of commando, no. You start off using a little drone with a camera on it, which can run around the house and while the enemy team are trying to sort of border the place up, which I'll get to in a few minutes, you can go underneath them and then you can spot the enemies and you can also locate where the bombs are. Very handy. The other thing is, is that once you've spotted the bombs, when you finally go back to your character afterwards, the objective will be displayed on where the bomb is. Pretty handy. And also, if one of your team spots it, then all your team get to see it. However, at the same time, the enemy can shoot your little drones to stop you from getting any further. And one of the abilities of one of the defenders is to be able to jam these little bots. Pretty handy. After having your drone out for 45 seconds, you then have to pack up your bag and then you're off for your mission. You leave your spawn point and then you make your attack. Plan however you like. Literally. Blow a hole in the wall, jump through the roof, go through a window, or just go through the front door. Your choice. I'd personally just ring the doorbell and run away. Yeah, that's me. But on the serious side of things, once you find the bomb, you then find the site to be able to plant your device, you set it off and then you defend the area from the defenders. 
Now for the defending team. Your objective, defend. Pretty much, that's it. Defend those sites as best to your ability as you can. Now the first thing that the defenders come across is their loadout menu. So you select your class and then hang on a second, you get to choose where your bomb site is. Hmm, very good. This allows for pretty good uh, strategy placing. This also allows for a bit of variety on how matches play out. I quite like it. Now, you'll have different things you can use. Now, different classes have different abilities. Get better armour or set up little barricades, put down some barbed wire, whatever your choice. However, you are able to plank up doorways as many times as you like. Border up windows as many times as you like. However, for walls that are very thin, and that can be blasted through, what you can do is, is that you have the ability, depending which class you go, I think, you have the ability to set up two defence walls that are reinforced. Now these take a few seconds to set up, but you only get two of them. And the only thing that can penetrate seems to be either sort of a block of C4 or specialised equipment for blasting through. After you made your defence, settle tight and wait for it all to blow over. However, the defenders do have one advantage, they do have a CCTV system that they can access and be able to spot the attackers. However, the attackers can shoot these CCTV cameras so that the enemy team cannot see them. If a defender dies, he can watch the CCTV cameras and be able to spot enemies from afar. Now both teams can win by eliminating all the opponents in the other team. Kind of like a team deathmatch. Another note is, if you are shot in the face, you will die. However, if you are shot in the chest, there is a chance that you will be able to be revived by a teammate. However, you can get shot on the ground and also you're going to bleed out. Unless your teammate gets to you in time. So we've talked about the sort of gameplay elements, how it rolls, how it works. Now, you're going to be seeing the game, so how does it look in today's gaming? Now, to be honest, it looks pretty good. But these are very small maps, so you can expect them to be able to bump up the detail a bit. Now, for the PlayStation 4 at least, the game seems to be rocking at a solid 60 frames per second. I haven't noticed any drops. However, it does suffer from a lack of reflections in some areas, but that's pretty much the only penalty. The effects look nice, the sound is fantastic, the way the particle effects are flying across the room. It just really adds to the atmosphere, especially with the smoke and debris going all over the place. It's really, really nice to see and very pretty. Now, lighting is a very big part of this game, and not in the way that, oh, it looks pretty, but in the way that you can use it to tactics sometimes. If it's night, for instance, sometimes you might be able to use some of the environment towards uh, your side, sort of hiding in the shadows and things like that to make it harder to see you. In fact, in some areas there are basements where lighting outside doesn't matter, it's more the inside. We can use that to your ability. The actual gameplay itself is fun. It can be frustrating at times, um, especially when you know you can't do a damn thing to defend yourself or when people catch you off guard, as you would happen to get in every single game that's out there that's multiplayer. And one thing that the game boasts itself about is the fact that you can use a whole number of ways to try and defend. Now, one of the things I will give it is yes it does have variety. It's hard to come across a match that plays out the same. For the simple reason of the two teams, one being able to choose why they spawn, that's a nice little feature, but also how you barricade your defences. Do you block all the walls on the left? Do you bother blocking all the corridors and things? Do you try to mislead where the enemy go? Are the bots able to even find where the bomb is, all these different factors can result in how the game plays out. So the game is repetitive, 
but it doesn't feel repetitive. I quite like it for that, I'll give that a little bit of a bonus for it. Now, glitches. There are some, this is the beta of course. So, two I've come across, or maybe three, one is the fact that sometimes the drones when they spawn fall through the floor and another one is if you throw one too close to a wall it goes through the floor. The other one seems to be the final kill cam isn't quite right, it needs a bit of adjusting, I think it's more of a bug as that one but that one's not a major one, it's just something that they could probably fix before launch. I'm sure of it. Right? Right? Ah, back on track anyway. Now, balancing is okay. I've not seen a match where everyone's winning on a particular map or anything like that. There's no class that seems to be over dominance, no weapon that seems too powerful. They are all powerful, you die in very, very quickly if you're caught. So it seems to be they're playing on the realism card there. And trolls seem to be a very bad thing at the moment. Now, when I first played it, I only came across one and that was it, however I'm coming across them more and more frequent. The most annoying one I came across was one who joined the match and shot everyone and then left. Yeah, just like that. Now when we come across trolls we cannot blame the game for having them, that's something that the developers can't control to an extent. However, that's just more a community thing, and hopefully the people will just bugger off somewhere else. Go back to Call of Duty. Another thing that they do have to work on, however, is the unfortunate case of host migration. Now, it seems to be that if you are not going to be the host, you are paused. You cannot get out of the menu. However, the person it is switching the host to, it keeps the gameplay running for them. This could be a glitch I've encountered, or it's something that they have to work on. I'm hoping it's something they will fix. Another one is load and connection times. That needs to be improved. One problem seems to be matchmaking. It does find people, and then it sort of stops. So you go back out and go back in and you join a match instantly. It's crazy. It, that's probably a server side that they're still working on. That's the point of a beta. Now, I've never done a review, sort of overview like this before, so if you could leave any feedback that would be great, I'd really appreciate it, and if you've enjoyed it, please leave a like, and if you didn't, then okay, you can leave a dislike, yeah. but if you want to give me some feedback, I'd really appreciate it, it always helps for the next video, and if you really want, you can subscribe for more content from this channel. And I hope you have a fantastic day, and I hope to see you in the next video. It can't be too bright for you, can it? Yeah, smashing everything isn't always a solution, mate. He's like a baby with a bad tantrum. Or a toddler.